Now let's look at the next module, which is the identification of inputs and declaration of outputs. We have looked at the PFC chain of custody management system. And now I'm going to present to you what a product group is and why it is also important for a company to be able to define their product groups because they entail the basically what the material, what kind of PFC chain of custody process the material has gone through. So like I said earlier, the chain of custody process involves identification of inputs, the due diligence system, if applicable, uh, the implementation of the chain of custody method and the declaration of outputs. So this diagram is just to show you where we are and what we are going to look at next. So uh, according to section 3.30 of the standard, a product group is defined as a product or set of products with equivalent input material which can be defined by product name, type and or category, the types of species, the chain of custody method that is applied, the material category, and the PFC claim. And what is uh, equivalent input material? This is material that can be substituted with each other without significantly changing the appearance, function, grade, or type of value of the output product. So now let's look at an example, just so that you understand. Let's say, for example, you have tables as the product name, type, and category. The type of species of this product is oak. The chain of custody method that is applied is a physical separation. The material category this uh, tables can fall into is either PFC certified, PFC control sources, neutral material, or other material. The PFC claim of these tables can be 100% PFC certified or 100% PFC origin. So this is an example to show you what a product group is. And from this description, you can already tell um, how or the kind of PFC chain of custody uh, process it has gone through and why it's necessary. So moving on. So imagine you are a company and you're receiving material from another supplier. So you need to be able to define your product group and by defining your product group, you also need to access the supplier identification and all the documents from the supplier. So here under section 5.1 of the standard, you can see that supplier identification is very important. And uh, this will show you the, if the PFC claimed material is valid and you can see this by checking the PFC website. And by the, through this, you can also identify the product, what kind of material categories they fall into. The quantity of the products are also important, especially if you're going to apply the chain of custody method. And the delivery identification, which is based on the date of delivery or the delivery period or accounting period, which we are going to see it is important when it comes to using the chain of custody method. So here we have an example of delivery identification where the, the company has to check the supplier details. For example, you can see on your right, the document clearly. You also need to check the customer details. Who is this material being delivered to? 
So you can see here it's being delivered to Smith Limited. The product details are here. So you can see it's sawn spruce or saw falling and it's the um, quantity as well, which is in four. Here we can see the quantity in meters cubed. The date uh, is clearly written here. The PFC claim, which is 63% PFC certified and PFC controlled sources, number six, and the PFC recognized certificate number, which is here. So this is just an example to show you how a delivery document looks like and which key information is relevant within uh, a delivery document. So I've talked about PFC claims and we haven't really looked at the different types of PFC claims you can have on input material. So what exactly is a PFC claim? This is the organization's declaration on material products uh, stated in the sales and delivery documentation. You can have different types of claims. For example, you can have X percent PFC certified or X percent PFC with the accepted translations depending on the country of origin. Uh, PFC controlled sources, PFC controlled sources, if it has gone through the due diligence system, you can also have 100% PFC origin. Uh, you can have an endorsed SFM system claim. This is example uh, claim from a forest owner who is PFC certified. The forest is PFC certified. And this is also defined as a national SFM uh, system. And uh, all of these claims are published on the PFC website. It's also important for you to note that national chain of custody system claims in this case are not accepted. The national chain of custody system claims, these are based on countries that have their own national chain of custody um, standard. So here we have an example of a claim, let's say the 100% PFC origin claim, which is a new claim according to the current standard. So this claim, for example, uh, the organization only used the physical separation method so if the organization has used the physical separation method and uh, they can use in the end the PFC origin or 100% PFC certified. Organizations who also choose to implement the percentage or the credit method they can consider it as 100% PFC certified. We're going to look at the different chain of custody methods in the next modules in the next day. So a more um, concrete example or graphical example for you to understand how you can make the claim 100% PFC origin. So here you have a material coming from a PFC certified forest. And the let's assume the forest owner has made the claim 100% PFC certified. This material then goes through, uh, let's assume this is a sawmill. And here they choose to apply the physical separation method. In the end, the sawmill supplies the material with the claim 100% PFC origin. And the material goes through another secondary producer and there they apply the physical separation method. In the end, they decide to use 
the 100% PFC origin claim. If they use the 100% PFC origin claim, they can in the end use the PFC certified logo. And if they also choose to use the 100% PFC certified claim in the end, they can choose to use the PFC certified logo. Another example or another case scenario with the same claim of 100% PFC origin. Let's say you have um, a PFC certified forest owner who chooses to sell the material with 100% PFC certified claim to a sawmill again. And at the sawmill, they choose to use the physical separation method. And in this case, they can pass on the claim as 100% PFC origin to a secondary producer who uses the material and then applies the percentage or the credit method. In the end, the producer can use X percent PFC certified. And if the material is above 70%, 70% and above PFC certified, they can use the logo. So now we move on to, um, again, make a, a comment on the PFC claims. So for example, at PFC, we have a list of the PFC accepted abbreviations, as well as translations of the PFC claims, which are available on the PFC website. So like I said, we have three official claims. You can have X percent PFC certified, PFC control sources, and 100% PFC origin. The accepted abbreviations are X percent PFC. And these are just examples of uh, the abbreviations that are not accepted by PFC. So you can find on the website the list of the translated PFC claims. So for example, you can find X percent PFC certified in different countries, languages, depending on the country of origin, PFC control sources as well and 100% PFC origin. Um, now let's look at the different material categories, which are also on the supply identification documents that I have showed you in the previous slides. So you can have, uh, for example, four uh, material categories. Now let's look at the first one. You can have a ma material with the uh, PFC certified, which fall into the PFC certified material category. And what does this mean? This means that the forest and tree based material, for example, has been delivered with X percent PFC certified or has also been delivered with another PFC and or scheme, which is claimed by the uh, forest management certified supplier, or you can also have a PFC certified material which meets the PFC definition of recycled material. You can also have material which falls into the category as PFC controlled sources, and this means that the forest and tree based material basically has gone through the due diligence system and has been determined uh, to have negligible risk. So at the end, if material has gone through the due diligence system and has been identified to have negligible risk, then the material falls under the category PFC control sources. The company can also receive other material. So basically this is material that has not yet gone through due diligence, uh, for example, and neutral material. This is non-forest uh, and tree-based material, for example, 
metal or stone. So these are the four different material categories. And now let's look at the, um, how we can uh, distinguish them from the claims and the different uh, material categories. So as a company or organization, you can receive the following materials with the following claims, for example. So you can receive PFC claim material that is X percent PFC certified or 100% PFC origin, PFC control sources or material that is coming from an endorsed uh, SFM st standard claim. Can also receive recycled material or non-PFC claimed material. So what material category would all this fall into? Something else to note, and I had just forgotten, is that now we have uh, trees outside forests as a potential PFC claim material. And this comes as a result of the SFM standard. So you can also receive material which has trees outside forests. You can also receive uh, endorsed SFM standard claims with trees outside forests and non-PFC claim material as well. So what material categories? Like I defined before, you can have PFC certified material, PFC controlled sources, other material, a neutral material. So for X percent PFC certified, it will go to the material category PFC certified, as well as 100% PFC origin. However, for PFC control sources, the material category will be PFC controlled sources. For the unendorsed SFM system claim, to fall under PFC certified material. For recycled material as well, the PFC uh, certified material that meets our definition. For non-PFC claim material, it will fall under other material and for non-forest and tree-based material it will be under neutral material. So, how do these material categories flow through the chain of custody process? So as input, you can have all the four uh, different material categories. When you apply DDS, you can have PFC certified material and I will explain why. And also you can have PFC controlled sources because this uh, has gone through the DDS process and uh, other material. For PFC certified material, basically material as input having PFC claims also have to go through the first process of DDS, which is to identify that this material is actually coming from or has a PFC claim. So once you access information showing that the material has a PFC claim, then it doesn't need to go through the other processes of DDS automatically. It is declared as PFC certified material. So these are just the examples. Then which material, how can you apply the chain of custody method you can have PFC certified material or PFC controlled sources. And in the end as well, for the output declaration and sales, the material categories can only be PFC certified material and PFC controlled sources. And the claims, how do the claims flow through the chain of custody process? So as input, you can have, um, X percent PFC certified, 100% PFC origin, the PFC control sources or SFM, and all these others. 
And the DDS, you can have uh, the same claimed, uh, different claims, as well as non-PFC certified. Under the chain of custody method, you can only have the three potential claims. And as output, uh, declaration and sales, you can also only have the three claims, which are X percent PFC certified, 100% PFC origin, and PFC control sources. So as a company, it's always important to check your supplier's uh, status. So you need to check, for example, the current certificate that they have, is it valid or has it been suspended? Has it expired? Is it withdrawn or is it also recognized by PFC by going to our website? You also need to check the scope, if they're PFC certified, uh, the version of the chain of custody standard they're certified against, uh, the type of certification they have and the chain of custody method that they applied. So this is a simple demonstration to show you uh, how you can check the supplier status on the PFC database. So you just go to find certified basically on the website. And uh, as for the declaration of output, uh, the key points here are to determine the PFC customer for the claim. So who is this material going to? And identifying the types of documents that are used to communicate the claims and whether you choose to use the, the trademark or not. So here to determine the PFC customer for the claim, again, you check the identification of the customer, the organization's name as the supply of the material. So you, let's assume you are the company the identification of the product, the quantity of products, the date of delivery or the delivery period, like I showed you in the delivery document, the applicable PFC claim and the certificate number. So this again is another example of the sales document. So what you need to pay attention to are the product details, and the different PFC claims, and the PFC recognized certificate number as well. So now let's see if we have understood a bit of the identification of input and declaration of outputs. Uh, we have a, a question here that you're going to participate in. The question reads, what does not have to be included in the delivery document of certif PFC certified material? A, the formal claim, or B, the PFC logo license number, or C, the certificate number, or D, the identification of the organization as the customer. So now I will hand over to Wong to take you through how to answer the question. I'll see you again in the next module.